Now, last but not least, for our T-spline modeling today is the tail. And the tail is the hardest part by far. With a few different principles, you will be able to create it no problem. Let's just save our model at this point. Now to teach you how to do the tail, we're actually gonna open up another design and take it slow here. So let's go into our create form environment and select a cylinder. I'm just gonna create it on the YZ plane and let's create something like that. So to start off with, you can see that we have a number of faces around the part, our diameter faces it's called, and we can add more or less. And we can do the same thing with our height faces. So at this point, let's just create diameter faces of four and our height faces at one. Let's do that. And of course we can make this a little bit longer if need be. Let's try that. Now let's learn a, a few more principles when it comes to manipulating edges and vertices and faces. So if we click on one edge, you can see it selects that one edge, but if we double click, it selects the whole string of edges at the same time. Now from there, we can modify it and we can do amazing things here. You can see that all of our different tools, our manipulator tools show up and we can adjust all of them in really, really cool ways. So we can adjust the angle here and you can see that it not only adjusts the angle, but it, it, it modifies or manipulates the entire form, which is really cool. Now we can move it as well in X and Z. We can scale it. We can scale it up and down. But as we do this, look at what it's actually scaling. It's just scaling it in that one direction. If we wanted to scale it in the other direction, we can grab the other bar here. Now say we wanna scale it uniformly. Well, we can actually just grab the middle one and this will scale the entire cylinder equally in all directions. Now, before we proceed, in order to create another segment, we're going to double click the edge and now hold down Alt on your keyboard. You can see on my computer, it's actually saying Option. And uh, that's just because my keys are switched around on my keyboard. So you're actually gonna press the Alt button. Regardless, if you press Alt, look what happens to the manipulator uh, tool guide here is it disappears if I've pick the wrong button or command as the button I'm picking right now and it grays out so we can't actually do anything to the manipulator. So just pick the key next to it, should be alter option. And now our manipulator shows up, we can do something with it. But as soon as we move the arrow, look what happens. We get a new segment. Let's do it again. Create another segment. As soon as we let go with the mouse and then we click again, it creates another new segment. So here we have all these different segments right here and we can create more and more if we want. There we go. So I'm gonna just gonna go cancel and undo. Now let's just create a simple bend. Let's say that we've got this cylinder and it's gonna bend up 90 degrees. So what we can do is double click, edit our form and bring this form out. So we create a new segment. Now, if I move this straight up, you can see that it follows the path, but it doesn't rotate like we need it to. So in order to make this smooth, we can grab this rotational wheel here and we can put it at 90 degrees. But as you can see, well, things don't look very smooth. And that's because this section right here should actually be at a 45 degree angle. So let's double click that section and move this to 45 degrees. And now look at it, things look a lot more smooth. Now it's not perfect, but it's a lot more smooth. We would probably have to move this in just a little bit more. There we go, and we can adjust this. And the point is, is that we manipulate each one so that it makes it as smooth as possible. Now we're gonna take this concept and we're going to apply it to the tail. And with each successive segment, we are going to make it a little bit smaller. So when we add a new segment here, we're gonna make that a little bit smaller and we're gonna keep going around and around. I'll go back to the original piggy bank here. We're gonna go around and around so that it goes to a point, just like that, a little curly tail. Okay, so let's go back to our, our new model here and we're going to do just that. So let's 
hide our other bodies. We don't need them. The reason why we hide them is just so that our eyes can see the main body easily. So we can even hide the original or the main body there just to create our cylinder. I'm going to create it on the XZ plane. And I don't know exactly how big to create it, but I'm just going to move this out here. Let's call it four diameter faces, one height face, and go OK. Now we can double click it, make our main body visible. And when we go modify, now we can put it in the right location. So we can even go to, well, actually, we don't know exactly where it is. We could import the last canvas image, but if you'd like to, you can. I'm just going to estimate approximately where the tail is going to go. So right now, it's a little bit big. I am going to scale it down. Again, we use the middle one for that. I'm going to scale it down, scale it down a little bit more. There we go. And it's going to be a little bit higher up. Perfect. OK, so at this point, I would like to take this tail. Actually, I think it's a little bit too big still yet. Let's make it let's make it a little bit smaller. There we go. So at this point, the best way to teach you how to do it is watch me model the tail first and then go back in time, follow the tutorial and do it yourself after. But we're going to take it one segment at a time. Let's do that. So double click. We're going to go OK because that referred to our original form. There we go. And we're going to modify it and create a new segment. Great. So if we look at our original model, we kind of go up and to the right and then back through and to the right. So the we're going to project it that distance, that direction to the top right. OK, but first of all, we have to go up. So again, we're going to modify and we're going to rotate it. Great. And this is squishing a little bit too much there. So all we have to do is move the model back. And again, we're just going to make this slightly smaller and then add a new segment. Rotate it, move it. And then this will have to adjust the angle just a little bit to keep it nice and smooth. So we'll make it a little bit smaller as well. Actually, I think I went the wrong way with that. Yeah, OK. Perfect. So just one thing before we proceed, what we're going to do is add one segment, and then we're going to adjust it all the way back to the main body. Add another segment, go all the way back in time to the main body. So let's do that. We're going to do the next one, and we're going to slowly move it to the right here as well. OK, so to spare you from trying to follow me to a T, I'm just going to not speak. I'm going to design the entire tale, follow along so that you can see kind of the principles that I'm following until we get to the tip or until we get to the next feature that we need to discuss. So I'll just stop there for a moment. And actually, at this point, I'm going to hide the main body of the piggy bank so that it doesn't get in the way of slowing down my computer. So here's a case in point two. As we go back in time and we see the tail, it starts getting a little bit kinked right there. So all we have to do is move that a little bit until it is a little bit more smoother in the right section. So that takes a little bit of getting used to, but we want a nice 
curved tail. And of course, this is a pigtail, everyone, so it doesn't have to be perfectly smooth. But I think you get the point here. So let's just keep getting into it. Now here's another fundamental thing that you need to learn is we cannot have one part of our form intersect another part of our form. We will run into problems. There'll be issues later on. It will say, no, you can't do that. And it won't even let us proceed uh, without the model disappearing. So just make sure as you bring the tail around that it doesn't intercept or it doesn't hit the main part of your tail. So right now we can see that with our model, it is intersecting it. So I just have to make sure that we bring our tail off to the side here. And we're going to actually obviously keep it curving. There we go. So it's not hitting it anymore. That's great. So at this point, what I'm doing is just taking a look at some of the, the faces and I see that things don't look the greatest. But let's finish this up. Okay, so I think I'm happy with that tail right now. It's nice and curly. If I've ever seen a curly tail on a piggy bank before, there we go. But obviously we're, we're missing one thing and it needs to have a point to it. We actually need to close off both sides of this. So let's close off the inside first of all. This is quite easy. We'll go to modify and fill hole. There we go. And we can actually keep creases there. Now on our other side, we've got some options. So we're going to go modify and we'll go to fill hole again. Let's pick that. Now we don't want to keep the crease. We want it to go to a point and we have fill hole mode. We can do fill star, which doesn't change it in this instance. If we had more faces that we worked with, this would actually do something or we can collapse. And it all depends on you, which one you like more. Uh, the reduced star looks pretty good. There we go. So. That tail looks nowhere near as good as the other tail that I've designed over here. This this turned out a whole lot better, but well, that's okay. So what I'll probably do here is we'll double click on that. Let's modify and I can actually bring it into the body a little bit more. Now, remember our body that we're working with, our form body that we're working with cannot intersect itself, but it can indeed intersect another body. So you can actually pull that in so it's intersecting the other body, the main body of the piggy bank. And there we have it. That looks a little bit better. Great. So let's turn on other bodies here. Take a look at our piggy bank. Check out our next tutorial in this series to learn the next steps in your quest of learning form modeling. See you then.